The contactor is an electromechanical power switch that is used to connect and disconnect all the power supply lines that go to the load through a command or control circuit. Also, it can be described as creating an interruption of the electrical power circuit. Here, two contactor models are presented, although the physical appearance is different, both have the same parts. How? A coil, terminals to power the coil, main contact terminals, auxiliary contact terminals, etc. For example, the contactor on the left, if we see from the top, we can see the supply voltage characteristics that the coil must have, which is 220 volts at 50 or 60 hertz. All of this will be described in more detail in the course of this video. Let's now look at the parts and internal configuration of an electromechanical contactor. The cylinder head, which is the fixed part, and the hammer, which is the moving part. These two elements make up the structure of the magnetic circuit when they come together. We also have the coil, which is a coil of wire that, when energized, generates a magnetic field around it along with the magnetic structure described above. The mechanical connection is the rigid element that joins the contacts to the moving part, here it is specified with dotted lines. The spring is the element that allows the stock to be separated from the hammer when the coil is de-energized. On the left side we have the terminals that connect to the coil and on the other side we have the main and auxiliary contacts of the contactor. The operation is as follows. If we consider a three-phase plus neutral voltage, then the simplest connection that can be made to run a three-phase motor is as shown. Be careful! I am assuming that the voltage between phase and phase is 380 volts, and between phase and neutral there is 220 volts. That is why, from one of the phases and the neutral is connected to the coil. If we press the switch, the coil is immediately energized and creates a magnetic field attracting the moving part. In this way, the contacts close and thus the energy flows to the motor. Be careful! The moving lines do not indicate the direction of the current but rather the journey from the energy source to the load. The current that is generated at the beginning when the coil is excited is a very high current. That's what? The stock and the hammer are joined so that these current decreases and the coil does not break down. When the coil is de-energized, the moving part returns to its default state due to the spring. This opens the contacts and allows current to flow to the motor. Here I have two electromechanical contactors of different models and brands. Let's briefly look at the external parts of this contactor, since the other one is also similar. This device is made up of three fundamental parts, and they are The coil, which is basically an electromagnet, whose connecting terminals are at the top. Here it indicates that the coil must be powered with 220 volts at 50 or 60 hertz. That is, between A1 and A2 it must be connected to 220 volts alternating current. In other cases, the coil is powered with 24 volts, 110 volts or any other voltage which will be specified on the device and must be taken into account. On the front we have the main contacts, L1, L2 and L3, which are the input lines. And, T1, T2 and T3, which are the work outputs. While terminals 13 and 14 are part of a normally open auxiliary contact. At the bottom we have terminal A2, which is the same as the one up here. Here they give us a table with specifications of current, voltage, power and more additional data that will be explained in more detail later. When the coil is energized through terminals A1 and A2, this moving part retracts, allowing all contacts to be closed or bridged. This other contactor is similar. On the back we have the three main input contacts and, on the bottom, their respective outputs. Here we have a normally open contact and its respective output. The following is a normally closed contact. These two contacts are auxiliary contacts. The power supply for the coil is through A1 and A2. 
Here is an animation of what happens inside the contactor. When the coil is energized, it generates an electromagnetic field that attracts the moving part of the contactor. In this way, the main and auxiliary contacts close and allow current to pass to the load. If the coil is de-energized, then the spring located between the moving part and the coil pushes the moving part to its default place. The most basic diagram that can be made to use a self-latching contactor is the one shown, where on the left side are the control and power diagrams, and on the right side is the circuit represented with physical elements. The control diagram is made up of the following elements, a thermomagnetic switch, although the symbol indicates that this must be a fuse, a normally closed stop button, a normally open start button, and the contactor coil that would be KM1. This is the circuit where the operator can interact to control the system. The second part is the power circuit, which is made up of a three-pole thermomagnetic switch and the contactor itself. In this part, it is used to connect high-power loads such as motors, heaters, lighting systems, and more. As we see, the contactor is what allows the link between the command or control circuit and the power circuit, with this element large loads can be controlled. Here we have all the elements connected as shown in the previous diagram. On this side we have the bipolar switch for the control circuit. We also have the stop button, the start button and the contactor. These push buttons are connected to the contactor in such a way as to generate self-locking. On the other hand, we have the three-pole switch where the power cables are connected. These cables have a larger cross-section than the cables used for the control circuit since a greater current will flow through them. In my case, I am going to test the operation with a light bulb. The voltage between the blue and red wires is 220 volts in alternating current. We test the circuit, we turn up the switch's lever. Up to this point, we already have everything energized, ready to do the corresponding test. We press the start button, and as we see, the light bulb turns on. This means that the contactor coil remains stuck and will remain so until the stop button is pressed. We press the stop button, and as we see, the light bulb turns off, since the contacts of the contactor return to their default position, which is open. If you want to know more about this circuit, there are already detailed videos about this on the channel, you can review it. That's it for this video. If you like this information, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel and share this video. See you later!